Coral have hit a new low today, and I believe this is a clear license breach. So I'm going to expose it. It's an eye opener that Coral don't want you to see, so I've collected a substantial amount of evidence from the account holder affected and got permission to share it in this video. So this morning on Twitter, a tweet was released by Tom Steadman at 1018 that said, so I deposited £100 and placed £100 on Mummy Roo to win, to win a four to one. She duly obliged and I immediately withdrew my money, as is my entitlement. Now the withdrawal is on hold. And then this note from Coral where it says, your withdrawal has been put on hold after depositing, then withdrawing with minimal gameplay. In order to release your funds for payment, could you please provide an explanation of this activity? So what happened afterwards is breathtaking. But before we go there, I need to give you some context for this situation for viewers who are not professional gamblers or working inside the industry. Tom had not used his Coral account for a considerable amount of time, years he tells me. He even shared proof that he used Coral's password reset yesterday because he couldn't remember his login details. He logged into his Coral account, deposited £100 with one deposit and placed his bet on Mummy Roo in the 744 race. The bet won and he requested withdrawal of his £500 at 7 51, 400 pound of it being profit and 100 pound of it being his own money. Coral then put his withdrawal on hold and asked for this extra information. Now, there are two legitimate reasons that they might have done this. First, an affordability check if they suspected he couldn't afford 100 pounds or may have a gambling disorder after just one bet. Or secondly, an anti-money laundering check for a whopping £400 that he'd won. Again, it seems very unlikely. The third option may be they were deliberately withholding his winnings under the guise of these checks. Now, it used to be winners that faced this treatment, but now average punters who have made a little profit on their account are facing it too. Bookmakers are abusing these checks to maximize profits by closing winners and retargeting disordered gamblers. This is the reason this tweet blew up so much with a few hundred retweets, thousands of likes and comments. Ordinary people are thoroughly fed up with this behavior. Meanwhile, industry broadcasters watch on without comment, even when asked. Now, this is nothing personal, but presenters like Lydia Hislop, Nick Luck, and Matt Chapman should be challenging these companies during peak viewer times on behalf of their viewers, instead of sending them, like lambs, directly to the slaughter, whilst defending their sponsors' behavior. Unlike their channels, this one is sponsored by The Truth, so if you want to support me, tap the like button down below. It's totally free, and I won't ask for any additional information. So, by 10.52 a.m., Coral's social media team picked up on this tweet and asked him to get in touch. A lot quicker than the email response that he'd sent to them the evening previous. I also contacted Tom myself to ensure the final details were correct for this video. Again, at 2.30 p.m., Tom added another update to thank Twitter for helping him expose this problem. Coral had done a U-turn, released his winnings, and restricted the betting activity on his account without any further explanation. The tweet on screen is here for you to read yourself, but how can this happen? Did their responsible gambling and anti-money laundering checks suddenly vanish? Looking at the UK Gambling Commission's licensing conditions, it clearly states that players must not be asked for information at the point they request a withdrawal from their account if the operator could reasonably have asked for this information at an earlier time. In Tom's case, they could have carried out these checks and requested this information long before he had a bet, or even long before he deposited his £100 in the first place. They only became concerned after he had won some money. Worse still, they didn't need to do these checks as they released his money after it drew attention on social media. If it wasn't for the social media, it's likely he would have been waiting weeks for a response with multiple requests for bank statements and identification en route to add extra friction to this withdrawal. You have to ask yourself, would they have done this if his bet had lost? Anyhow, if they wanted to promote responsible gambling, why would their message be signaling that he should increase his gameplay, encouraging him to bet more? It's not the first time this kind of thing has happened though. It's well documented with multiple companies doing similar things on this channel. The Gambling Commission CEO said he'd step in if operators abuse these checks, but that was nearly six months ago now and I've seen nothing. Looking at the Gambling Commission's website, there's never been a fine issued to a betting company for this kind of behavior. So I wouldn't hold your breath this time around either. Although Coral has created a template to send customers who are withdrawing like this. How many people have they sent this email to? How many people have they encouraged 
to bet away their funds instead of processing a withdrawal. How many people hasn't social media saved? Here's another example of Coral sending out templates to a winning customer, just five hours and 45 minutes after receiving an email about opening his account. Matthew had his account closed and another email template came through. The message is clear, unlike Coral's advertising, smart money is not with Coral. So what's the solution? The corporations say they need more customer bank statements to protect disordered gamblers. It's outrageous. Clearly, their interest is enhancing profits, which is why I thought the MP for Northwest Leicestershire, Andrew Bridgen's comments about single customer wallet earlier in the week were the best answer that I've possibly seen. It's the only solution that works for all problems because currently it's a few clicks to deposit, lose your life savings, and even develop a gambling addiction. But for withdrawals, it's hold on customer funds, know your customer checks, anti-money laundering checks, responsible gambling checks, and weeks of email tennis just to get your money. All of which is decided by the betting corporations themselves. This customer abuse has to stop. The only relationship I believe that should exist between a punter and a gambling company is, here is my money, this is the bet that I wish to place. If you're happy to accept my stake at the price that you are offering, then you pay me immediately if I win. And if I lose, you get to keep the funds and you're fully entitled to them. By having a single customer wallet, any AML or affordability checks are done long before the deposit is made. Disordered gamblers are protected effectively across multiple platforms and ordinary consumers don't have to repeatedly submit their bank statements to different betting companies and bookmakers don't have to spend fortunes doing the same regulatory checks over and over again. And of course, bookies don't get to abuse the checks either. It's a simple three-way win. There's a great article laying out all the details on this on the Bar Stewards blog by Lee Keys. The only resistance to this solution comes from people who have a vested interest in doing the wrong thing because it's benefiting them. The reality is modern technology and big data has allowed big betting companies to exploit customers like never before, which is why you really shouldn't ignore this video here because it shows you exactly how they process and manipulate your data to make extortionate profits and how you can beat them at their own game. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.